In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a custom road trip map from start to finish. And I'll give you some tips and tricks along the way that will hopefully help you customize yours and get it looking exactly like you want. The first thing that you're going to do is click create your map. That's going to bring you over here to the editor and the editor automatically defaults to a flight map. So if you look up here in the upper left hand corner, we're going to change it from air trip to road trip. Just click that icon, then click OK. And now you're creating a road trip map and a default road trip is already added into the map from New York to Los Angeles. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is customize that to your personal route that you want to show on the map. I was recently working on a map from a road trip that we took in Washington around the Olympic Peninsula. So we'll use that as an example. So the first thing that we're going to do is come over here to the left hand side and we're going to search for where our road trip started. For us, it was Bainbridge Island. So we'll select Bainbridge Island. Our next stop was Port Angeles. So now we've officially started our road trip and we're going to add a third location. The next place we went was Forks, Washington. And you can either search for a city or you can search for an exact address. Either one should show up as long as you can get there in a car. So we'll keep it simple for now. We'll go with just these three stops. And the next thing that you're probably going to want to do is readjust the way your map is framed. And that's super easy. Just come over here to the right hand side and you can actually drag and drop this map anywhere that you want. So we'll leave it right there. The other thing that you can do is you can zoom in and out and you can do that using these buttons here. Or if you're on a laptop and you have a trackpad, you can just pinch and zoom on the trackpad. And this gives you a really precise zoom. So let's leave it there. Also, if you have a mouse, um, you can use the little scrolly ball thing to zoom in and out. Lots of ways to customize your map. So after you get it positioned exactly like you want, the next thing that you're probably going to want to do is move the titles around. So as you can see, Port Angeles is kind of on the root line right here and it doesn't look very good. And all you have to do is grab that and you can drag and drop it anywhere on the entire map. So let's put it up here in the water so it stands out. And then we'll take forks and we'll, we'll put it over on this side just for fun. And now our maps and our titles are looking pretty good. But you can actually take it another step and customize your titles even more. If you come over here and you toggle this button from edit location to edit labels, you can actually change the labels to say anything that you want. So for some reason, if you just wanted to say Bainbridge instead of Bainbridge Island, as you can see that update it over here on the map. Another thing that you can do is you can actually just completely delete a label. So let's say you didn't spend much time in Port Angeles. That wasn't something very special to you and you didn't want to highlight it. You can just completely delete it and it will disappear from the map. This comes in really helpful if you're building a long road trip with a lot of titles. Sometimes the titles can make the map look really cluttered and messy. And so it's nice to be able to delete a few of those that weren't super important to you. And then after you have your map and your titles exactly like you want, the next thing that you're going to want to do is come down here and probably give your map a title. So let's just say road trip 2020. And then we'll say miles driven 343. I'm completely making that up, but you can type anything you want in the title and the subtitle. Another thing that you can do over here on the right hand side of the screen is you can actually change the entire orientation of the map between horizontal and vertical. So you can decide what you think looks best or what fits your space best, but we'll leave this one horizontal for now. Changed a little bit, so we'll just readjust it and zoom it back in. And before we move on to the next step, there is one little hack that I want to show you. Several people have been asking about representing ferry trips on a map. Um, unfortunately, our routing software doesn't take ferries into account right now. So I want to show you a way to get around that or just create two separate road trips on the same map by creating a gap 
in your start and stop location. So for us, this road trip actually didn't start in Bainbridge. It started in Mount Hood. So we're going to come back here to edit locations. We're going to search for Mount Hood. And after we have that selected, since it was the start of our trip, we're actually just going to grab this and you can reorder your stops any way that you need to. So we'll put that at the top since that was the start. And then from Mount Hood, we went to Seattle. And then we're going to drag this up to Mount Hood. So now our road trip is in the correct order. And what actually happened on this trip, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see it, is we took a ferry from Seattle to Bainbridge Island. But right now the map's showing that we did this long route around the water. So in order to make this look a little more cohesive with our trip, what we're going to do is we're going to click add another location. That's going to add an additional search bar. And then we're just going to drag that search bar up between Seattle and Bainbridge Island. And as you can see, it creates a gap. So I think that looks a lot nicer than having that super long U road trip that we actually didn't take. So you can't actually show ferries yet, but you can at least um, show the gap of where you stopped and started on land. So I'm going to play with this for just a second, get it looking a little bit better, pull the titles over. I actually think now that we've added Mount Hood in, this actually might look better as a vertical map. So I'll drag it around. We kind of lost, lost forks out there. So I'll drag that under. We'll drag Bainbridge up a little bit so it's not sitting so close to Seattle. And then I think that looks pretty good. We're ready to move on to the second step. So this is kind of like the base, and then from here, you're going to get to play around with the layouts and the colors, and to do that, just click Customize. And then as you can see, we have six different layouts to choose from. I'll just quickly click through them so you can see what they look like. And then I don't exactly have a, a favorite layout. I think it all kind of depends on the map that I'm creating. I actually like this one, the editorial one with the, the top title. I'm just going to reposition this a little bit. And then after you've chosen your layout, you can choose your color options. I'll just quickly click through these so you can see them. And I think my favorite is actually this nature walk because it has a little extra texture. And then once you kind of finalize the design of your map, you're going to move on to step three, and that's the frame and finish step. Here you're going to be able to select the size of your map. And then after you get the size selected, you can decide how you want to frame your map. You can choose from hangers, metal frames, wood frames, and then all of those are displayed, or at least uh, a preview of those are displayed down here. And if you want to see what that looks like a little bigger, just click on that image and it'll blow up. And so here you can see what the hangers look like. This is obviously a stock image in between the two frames. Don't worry about that. You're going to get your map and not the stock image. This is just giving you a preview of the frames. So, and as you can see, depending on which one you choose, if you choose the hanger, you can choose between black, natural wood, and white. Metal, you can choose between black, silver, and gold. And wood, you can choose between black, natural wood, and white. So depending on what kind of frame you want, you'll be able to choose different colors. Let's leave it as a hanger for now. And then we'll go ahead and go with a natural wood hanger because I think that'll complement the brown nicely. And then from there, all you have to do is add this map to your cart. And then you can check out. And if you want to go back and edit this map, um, all you have to do is click edit right here. That brings your, your map back up. And if you need to make any final touches, uh, you can do that here. And then come over here to the last tab, the frame and update tab. And if you just want to update that original map that you designed, just click update and that'll add the update to your cart. Or if you wanted to create a completely new map inside of your cart in order to, you just click add to cart as a new map. So hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully now you have the confidence to create something that is worthy of hanging on your wall and being displayed to the world.